Hey what's up guys, it's Mike from Alpha Reptile and I just wanted to let you guys know before we start the video that uh, there is actually a competition going on until the end of January which is the Reptile Report Best of the Year Awards. So the first heat is basically nominations on Facebook. I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you have a Facebook page. Make sure you go there and vote for me. Not only just should you vote but you should also like all the other comments that mention my name simply because that will actually help me in the long run. Those all can count as entries into the competition. I don't want to take much time out of the video to mention that, but I just wanted to mention it at the beginning so you guys can check it out and help me win this if you think I am worthy. In this video, we are not actually staying in my room here. We're going to be teleporting to Phoenix, Arizona, where I talk with Joe from the Phoenix Herpetological Society, which, by the way, if you guys could find any, like, don't buy a Starbucks tomorrow and donate like four or five dollars or any amount of money you possibly can to the PHS or the Phoenix Herpetological Society. Please do so. I'll leave a link somewhere on the screen here and you guys can also go to their website which is phoenixherp.com. You guys can go check it out and donate from there. So please, from the bottom of your heart, if you can find even a dollar, it makes a big difference. While we're with Joe at the Phoenix Herpetological Society, we are going to be talking about the differences between crocodiles and alligators. Now there are a couple ones that people probably think of right off the top of their head, which are explained in this video, but there are some that I have never even heard of. I hope you guys are able to learn something from this video. I thoroughly enjoyed filming it. Enough of my rambling, why don't we go join Joe down in Phoenix. All right, uh, so to jump into things, talk about some of the differences between alligators and crocodiles. Uh, I still have Charlie here, one of the first alligators to call PHS home. Uh, if you look at him, uh, one of the first things that we tell people if you're trying to tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator is look at the head. Uh, look at Charlie's snout. You'll see that there's a, a really wide U-shaped snout. It's a real broad uh, face on an alligator. Uh, with the crocodiles, they typically have a much more pointed uh, V-shaped snout. When we have kids in summer camps going on here, we tell them that if their snout would fit in a peace sign, it's going to be a crocodile. If it looks like you could take your hand and put it around a snout like that, make a big U, then it's probably gonna be an alligator. Getting down into uh, some more specifics, if you look at their mouth when they're closed, alligators, you're only gonna be able to see, for the most part, the teeth that are coming down from the bottom. Uh, with crocodiles, when their mouths are closed, you're able to see both the teeth coming down from the bottom and the teeth coming up from the top. And to remember that, you can uh, remember smile like a crocodile. Even when their mouth is closed, they're showing all their teeth. And into a couple more specific differences, uh, typically the osteoderms, which literally means bony skin. Uh, for crocodiles, those are typically a lot more pronounced, uh, usually shoot up quite a bit more. So I just wanted to interject right here. Joe mentioned that the osteoderms are present in both crocodiles and alligators. One's bigger, one's smaller. However, he didn't really say what their purpose was. Their purpose actually is the same for both animals. What osteoderms are is that they are a bony layer in the dermal tissue of the alligator. It serves as a physical protection from damage and wounding to the internal internal organs and the animal itself. Not only that, but a lesser known one is that it actually helps the animals thermoregulate. It's essentially connected to a bunch of different blood vessels and whatnot uh, that help the animal regulate their temperatures in warm or cooler temperatures. With that being said, we can go back to Joe and talk more about these beautiful scaly creatures. Getting into behavioral traits, alligators are much more intelligent, uh, much more evolved than most crocodilian species. Uh, alligators have full color vision, they're fully capable of recognizing people. They're not nearly as territorial and not nearly as aggressive towards people. Uh, you, you don't hear about alligators eating people. Uh, occasionally a story will make the news where an alligator has uh, attacked somebody, and usually it's not so much of an attack as a, a case of a mistaken identity. Just like sharks might accidentally grab a surfer thinking it's a seal and usually lets go, alligators will usually do the same thing, so when people are attacked or even killed by an alligator, Usually they find the body uh, really close because the alligator bites them goes, ah, it's gross, it's human, I don't want it, and he, he lets it go. Uh, whereas crocodiles, they just kind of see us as weird looking prey items and, and they will actually uh, consume people if you get too close. 
uh, and they happen to be hungry enough. We're back in Calgary. Oh man, Phoenix was so nice and warm. I wish I was still there. But there are a couple different things when I was doing my research for this video that Joe actually didn't cover when we were talking about the differences between crocodiles and alligators. There are two extra differences that he didn't talk about. The first one is the presence of a lingual salt gland in crocodiles. The second one we're going to talk about is the presence of dermal pressure receptors or DPRs in both crocodiles and alligators. However, they are more abundant and found everywhere on crocodiles. And we'll get into both. So the first difference, as I mentioned, is the lingual or tongue salt glands in crocodiles. These salt glands are actually modified salivary glands and their function is instead of secreting a mucus, they actually secrete salt from the animal itself. The effect that this has on the crocodiles is that it allows them to stay in salt water or tidal estuaries and various places around coasts or traversing like oceans. The salt gland allows them to do that because it actually excretes salt from their body maintaining their osmoregularity in their body. It's important to note that gharials also have this feature so it gives them that ability as well. On the flip side, alligators and caimans do not have this. They have a smooth tongue. They have lost the ability to secrete salt from their body in the tongue region. However, it does not deter them from being found in salty areas. They just prefer fresh water. It has been known that larger alligators have been found in places like the Everglades. It's, it's not saying that they can't go in salt water because it is possible. It just allows the crocodiles and gharials a much larger period that they're physically able to spend in high salt concentrated waters. Just like gharials, caiman are the, uh, I guess, alligator equivalent. They have also lost the presence of the lingual salt glands. So now we can move on to talking about the second difference uh, between the alligators and crocodiles, and that is the dermal pressure receptors. They are found on both creatures, both alligators and crocodiles crocodiles have these, however they are much much more abundant on the crocodiles. Both alligators and crocodiles have them lining their upper and lower jaw. You can see in this video of the alligator that it has those little dots in between every scoot around its jaw. This is also present in crocodiles and the function of these receptors is to sense extremely small changes in pressure in the water around the animal. This aids the animal in catching prey. Like a fish swimming by, it will sense the pressure difference of the water in front of them and be able to capture the prey. Like I mentioned earlier, alligators only have it lining their front jaw, and in contrast to that, crocodiles have them on every single scale of their body. That is one of the main differences. You can tell crocodile skin from alligator skin, as it messed up as it is to say. The crocodile skin will have a dot at the bottom layer, bottom-ish of every single scale. This is highlighted in the picture you guys can see right here. The alligator belly is on the left while the crocodile belly is on the right. As you can see, the crocodile has a dot in every single scoot, while the alligator has just an extremely smooth uh, ventral portion of the body. That wraps up this video talking about the differences between crocodiles and alligators. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys learned something. I know even doing the research, I actually learned something, and I really wanna thank Joe and the whole PHS for allowing me to film and spread the knowledge about their wonderful facility. It's really something that deserves more attention, and they're great people doing a great thing for animals that hopefully everybody on this channel loves and wants to continue to uh, boost the conservation and allow these animals to thrive rather than the continual demolishing of their natural habitat. I want to thank you guys very much for watching this video. Joe, thank you specifically very much and everybody at the PHS. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed my time there. I hope I'm able to come back because uh, I would love to film some more videos with you guys. If you guys like this video, drop a like down below. If you have any questions, comments, concerns for me or the staff at the PHS, leave them in the comment section. Uh, if I don't know the answers, then I will contact them and find them out for you. Like I said in the beginning of the video make sure you donate to them they're a very worthy cause you can sponsor an animal you can just do a one-time donation uh, go check out their website phoenixherp.com and you'll have all the information for donating there if you're more interested in my trip to phoenix as well as all my other adventures that go on here make sure you follow me on instagram i am down there you will also see a link to my facebook page in the description down below so Go check that out, you will not be disappointed. And of course, if you like this video, definitely click that subscribe button. We're encroaching on 50,000 subscribers. And when we hit that, there might be a giveaway. 
While you're down there, make sure you click the notification bell. That'll notify you every time I go live or post a video. So click that notification bell and we will see you in the next video.